Let's get back to Sons of Liberty, and we're going to talk specifically about who the Sons are going to target, because the whole point of this movement is they have to eliminate their opponents. They have to eliminate their political appointments. Opponents. So who's the first one? It's this man, Governor Thomas Fitch of Connecticut. He is a staunch loyalist. He is a big supporter of the British crown. And the Fitch family, as I'm sure most all of us are familiar with, run very deep, runs very deep here in Connecticut. Another one of those misconceptions that we have is it's Americans versus British. No, it's actually Americans versus Americans. Because the people that are operating here on behalf of the British crown, they had lived here for generations too. The next guy is going to fall under that same category. And here he is. <laughs> this is Jared Ingersoll. He is the official stamp agent for Connecticut. Throughout the colonies, there are, there are officials appointed by the Crown that will act as the enforcers, because you've got to have people enforcing the measure, right? Jared Ingersoll is the official enforcer for Connecticut. The Ingersoll family is one of the most prominent families in New Haven. Everybody knows them. They are very well known, very well recognized. I feel bad for Jared Ingersoll because, unfortunately, his job was over before it even began. The act isn't implemented until around November of 1765, but what happens after the act is passed and after Ingersoll has received his appointment, well, it doesn't take long for the Sons of Liberty to start chatting, chat, start to chat amongst themselves, saying, these are our targets, what are we going to do about them, right? And Ingersoll is writing to his other, um, his other colleagues that are stamp agents throughout, throughout the region. He's writing back and forth to a gentleman named Andrew Oliver up in Boston. And throughout the summer of 1765, they're exchanging letters back and forth. Andrew Oliver says to, says to Ingersoll, listen, unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months, you are probably aware of the, uh, of the uh, actions that have been taken against me. Because what happened to Andrew Oliver? The Sons of Liberty broke into his home, they ransacked it, looted it, totally, totally it took, it took a lot of aggression out on it. And he says, if you're not careful, this is what's going to happen to you. Well, Jared Ingersoll didn't really seem to worry that much, at least. And incidentally, about maybe a day or so after he received that letter from Andrew Oliver, he got burned in effigy on the, on the Norwich Town Green. And if that wasn't a, uh, a sign of bad things to come, I don't know what is. But, uh, but hey, the warning signs were there, so he, he, he could have heeded them, but he, he definitely signed. Um, as a side note, Jared Ingersoll, here's, here's another warning sign that came. Jared Ingersoll had appointed some subordinates underneath them, one of which was a gentleman named Nathaniel Wales, Jr., uh, he very enthusiastically volunteered to say, I would love to help, uh, you know, serve my country and serve the mother country to help enforce the measures of the Stamp Act. And that was, that was early summer 1765, not even two months after that, he wrote Ingersoll another letter saying, gosh, I hope you can forgive me. I think I've made a horrible mistake. Um, you know what? I don't think I'm really cut out for this job anymore. <laughs> so they got to him, too. <laughs> They're getting to these people very quickly, very efficiently. Nathaniel Wales Jr. ended up joining one of the committees of correspondence here in Connecticut shortly before the war breaks out. 